This is the recently released FCX24 lemur from FMS. And this is my FCX24 lemur after a coat of paint and some late night Amazon parts purchases. Was it worth it? Well... Hello everyone and welcome. Today my FCX24 lemur is getting rebuilt. I've got some fresh parts, I've got some spray paint, and miraculously I have some free time. So let's get out the tools and dive right in. One of the more recent releases from FMS, this little model has received a lot of praise from the community, but also a few critiques as well. The lemur represents what is probably the most capable crawler in the FCX series. Big wheels, a purpose-built tube frame style chassis, and of course that awesome two-speed transmission present in all FCX series vehicles. However, some have found the stance to be a little high and the wheelbase to be a little short for their liking, myself included. The lack of any additional shock mounting holes is also a little disappointing for some hobbyists. It's a good looking rig right out of the box, but customizing your rig to make it your own is a big part of what this hobby is, and today I intend to do just that. Of course, if you want to learn more about the lemur, you can check out the review video I did featuring this model, you'll find that link below in the description. While I'm not ready to blow 200 bucks on parts, there are a few things that I wanted to address with this truck, both related to its performance and appearance. The first was lengthening the wheelbase, both to reduce the sort of stubby look that this truck has stock, and to help this rig be a little less prone to rolling over backwards. To accomplish this, I'll install some longer forelinks. I'm not crazy about the wheels and tires that are included stock, so I'll be swapping those out as well. It's amazing what a new set of wheels and tires can do to the overall appearance and performance of a vehicle, as you'll soon see. Finally, I'll also be installing some brass portal covers to get a bit more weight down low. At this point, all those parts were on order, and we'll have a closer look at each one in a few minutes. Right now, I was simply tearing down the truck in preparation for those new parts. All in all, this lemur is pretty easy to take apart, and more importantly, put back together. I know some hobbyists really hate having to deal with crosshead screws, which on this model are holding on these body panels and are connecting the cage pieces. After all the tiny projects I've worked on though, nothing really scares me at this point. I think FMS just wanted to use some smaller size screws for the exterior parts of the body so they aren't as noticeable. They probably could have used some hex head hardware for the cage though, but it is what it is. As far as I can remember, everything on the chassis is hex head. Just make sure you're using the right size driver, especially for those crosshead screws. Be gentle and you'll be fine. Don't even worry about getting a little paint in there, it's all good. I figured it would be kind of fun to paint the chassis and add a bit more scale detail to the truck. Yeah, the lemur might be a bit of a strange choice of vehicle to do it, but eh, why not? I started by painting the cage green, but I did mask off a few sections that I wanted to remain black, just to add a bit of variation. In a perfect world, I would have had a better paint match to that sort of yellowish, greenish paint seen on some of the body panels. Obviously nothing elaborate here when it comes to the painting process, but I do like how it changes up the look. I was hoping that some thick paint and a thick clear coat would help protect the paint from scratching right off of this plastic roll cage. Spoiler alert, it really didn't make that much of a difference. Uh, maybe using a good primer and doing a bit of sanding on that plastic first would have helped. This was just a really quick spray and pray type of a situation. I really wasn't interested in investing a ton of time into painting this roll cage. Looking at the glass half full though, the first scratch is always the hardest on any new rig. And here I managed to give this rig multiple scratches before I was even done building it. So no worries about scratching it out on the trails. Like I said, I wanted to add a few scale details, starting with using some contour wire mesh to fill in a little area behind the seats. I thought it would be kind of a cool look. All I had to do was trace out the opening, cut the mesh to that shape, and then glue it in place. It turned out looking pretty cool, and next I wanted to make some nets to go on either side for both the driver and navigator. I got a few measurements, designed a simple window net, and then got each piece painted and installed. Very easy, and I guess they turned out looking all right. If I was to do it again, I think I would have tried to make that net a little finer. I have gotten quite a few compliments though when I posted some pictures, which I really appreciate. 
I have posted the STL file on Patreon if anyone's interested. It's certainly far from the most impressive STL file we've ever posted over there, and you will need to trim it to get it to fit. But hey, if you can use it, go right ahead. Of course, you could also scratch build something pretty similar if you wanted to. It would probably just take a bit longer. I used a Sharpie marker to add some simple detail to the fuel cell, which I had painted silver. A little later on, I also applied a black wash to the front grille. It turned out looking okay. If the details were a little deeper, it probably would have looked even better. Overall though, I was really happy with how the truck was looking so far. It really pops with that green paint. I went ahead and put the truck back together since I wasn't sure how long it would be until the parts arrived and I could complete the build, but guess what showed up the same day? The new wheels, new links, and new portal covers have arrived. Who doesn't enjoy that new part smell? I'll provide the link to these parts below in the description. I'm really loving these new wheels. The tires that came pre-mounted on them seem pretty decent. They definitely have a more aggressive lug than the stock ones. I also think these 1.0 wheels are going to look better and more proportional to the truck than the stock wheels. They are metal, so they'll help get some more weight down low. These are the fully adjustable suspension links that I chose for this project. They're from RC All Wheel Drive and include everything that you'll need to swap out the stock suspension links. The reason I chose these over the more popular one piece links are that I'll have the ability to precisely adjust the length of each link so I can fine tune the wheelbase to be exactly what I want. Of course, I will need to ensure that I'm not overextending the stock drive shafts as I will not be upgrading them at this time. By extending the wheelbase, I am increasing the risk of damaging the plastic drive shafts as there's less surface area connecting each piece. So far, the stock drive shafts have been hanging in there just fine, but if I encounter any issues in the future, I'll upgrade them. Precisely adjusting the length of each link is nice, but you can probably imagine that it can get a bit tedious. I have had a few of those nuts on the end come loose and the links getting a little out of adjustment, so I'll probably throw some Loctite onto those nuts once I figure out exactly how long I want them to be. If you don't have a need to precisely adjust the length of each link or you want to retain the stock wheelbase, save yourself the trouble and just get some one-piece links. This kit does include all of the necessary hardware and you can reuse the stock shocks. You just need to remove the stock ball joint from each one. I did find that the screws that secure the lower links and shocks to the axle were a bit too short. I'm not sure why they didn't include some slightly longer screws, but despite them not being in all the way, they have held everything in place so far. Definitely don't strip out those threads though when driving these in, or they probably won't hold. If you want some extra strength, I would definitely recommend providing your own slightly longer M2 hardware to secure those lower links and shocks to the axle. All other hardware included with the links was perfectly sized. The stock upper Y-Link will be replaced with two individual links, making this lemur now have more of a true four-link setup. Overall, swapping the links was pretty easy and straightforward. Even easier than that, though, was installing these brass portal covers from Injora. Again, all the necessary hardware was included, including some brass hex mounts to increase the backspacing, which may be necessary depending on what wheels you're using. To start, I decided to only install the brass covers on the front axle and not the rear. I've seen some people say that having more weight in the front will help pull it over obstacles. I might experiment a bit and see what difference it seems to make having the brass covers only in the front versus on all four corners. And now I can finally complete the truck by putting on those awesome looking wheels. I did have a little trouble at first getting the wheel nuts on. The included tool was not quite big enough for the stock nuts, and your standard RC wheel wrench that comes with about every ready to run or kit was too large to fit all the way down inside the hole. Fortunately, after a little work with a rotary tool though, I could get it to fit. What a difference a few new parts and some paint can make. I'm already loving the look. At this point, I went ahead and adjusted the four links to increase the wheelbase while making sure I wasn't overextending the drive shafts. You'll probably want to use something like a caliper to make sure that you're making the left and right side links the same size, otherwise your axle will be at an angle. Also, while you're adjusting, make sure that your pinion angle is not too out of whack. You don't want the pinion shaft pointing down towards the ground, for example. And here's a very quick and easy free mod that many FCX24 and FCX18 owners will do, and that's flipping these screws right here. 
They're located on each side of the front axle, and flipping these around will give you just a tiny bit more steering angle. And this slight increase shouldn't cause any issues with binding or damage any drivetrain or steering components. The final thing I did was add a few decals to increase the horsepower. And with those in place, the lemur is now complete. Obviously, when it comes to customizing your rig, everybody is going to do it to their own style. But extending that wheelbase and putting on some different wheels really enhances the appearance, in my opinion. I may come back and do some more mods on this lemur at a future time, but for now I wanted to take it out and see how it performs. Unfortunately, winter is here and the weather is not super conducive for some RC driving on this day. The snow is quite wet and kept accumulating on the wheels, at times getting to the point where the motor was really struggling to move the truck at all. Regardless of that though, we took it to a few spots where the truck really struggled before, and the performance improvement is undeniable. In all fairness, it's not like the bar was set super high when this truck was in stock form, but I'm very happy with the direction it's moving. While better in many ways, adding the extra weight has had a few negative side effects. At times the motor, particularly when in high gear, can seem a bit underpowered. Same with the steering servo. While a servo and motor upgrade may be in this truck's future, for now it's still a fun truck to drive, especially when the weather improves a bit. One negative side effect of extending the front suspension links is that the servo now comes into contact with the grille before the shocks bottom out. Though I'm not missing out on a huge amount of travel, it's still a bit undesirable and is probably something I'll look into addressing in the future. But there you go, the new and improved FCX24 lemur. If you've got any ideas or recommendations for some additional mods, let me know below in the comments. This was a very fun and simple project. If you enjoyed this video, definitely make sure you're subscribed to this channel because I'm going to be modding another FMS product that I think is going to look pretty awesome once complete. Definitely stay tuned for that, but until then, as always, thank you for watching.